Marilyn Monroe's tragic death in 1962 sent shockwaves around the world, but questions have swirled for decades about what really happened to the iconic actress. Though her passing was ruled an accidental overdose, many, including Frank Sinatra, believe sinister forces were involved. Over 60 years later, revelations from Sinatra's inner circle shed new light on his perspective. Join Factsverse as we examine what Sinatra uncovered about the final days of his close friend Marilyn. Monroe's Affairs with the Kennedys Marilyn Monroe's rumored affairs with John F. Kennedy and Robert F. Kennedy have long captivated the public's imagination. Monroe first met JFK in the 50s, likely beginning an intimate relationship around the time of his 1960 presidential campaign. Their affair was fostered by mutual friend Frank Sinatra, who allowed them to meet at his Palm Springs home for discreet rendezvous. Following JFK's election victory, Monroe memorably serenaded the new president with a sultry rendition of Happy Birthday, Mr. President in 1962. This highly publicized performance further fueled speculation of an illicit romance. According to Monroe's confidants, she cherished private pillow talk with JFK, in which he would share perspectives on world affairs. Monroe saw herself as Jack's intellectual companion, not just a casual fling. Their paths crossed frequently in 1961 and 62 within JFK's inner circle. Some historians posit RFK used his growing friendship with Monroe to ingratiate himself to his brother. Others claim it was a romantic rivalry in which RFK pursued Monroe partly to spite JFK. RFK's personal phone records show lengthy conversations between his office and Monroe's home, implying late-night intimacy. Whatever the truth, Monroe found herself enthralled by the charismatic brothers, especially Jack. She saw them as her guides to the heights of power in Washington. Tragically, once JFK replaced Monroe with newer mistresses like Judith Exner, he and RFK abruptly severed contact with the actress. This deep rejection by her Camelot idols was emotionally crushing for Marilyn Monroe. Having invested over a year of intimate access to America's royal family, Monroe was ruthlessly cast aside once she was no longer amusing to the Kennedys. In the final months of her life, Monroe tried desperately to reconnect with her former lovers and understand why she had been heartlessly abandoned. This cruel rejection by such influential men profoundly damaged the already fragile actress. Monroe's Stay at Cal Neva Lodge In the final weekend of her life, Marilyn Monroe stayed at the Cal Neva Lodge on the shore of Lake Tahoe. The resort was partially owned by Frank Sinatra, who frequently allowed Monroe to stay free of charge as a courtesy to his close friend. Little did Sinatra know this weekend would be the last time he'd see Monroe alive. Monroe had traveled to Cal Neva in the company of her ex-husband, Joe DiMaggio. Unbeknownst to the public at the time, they had quietly reconciled and were making plans to remarry. According to Sinatra's eyewitness account, Monroe was in a highly emotional state throughout her weekend there. She anxiously vacillated between elation about her reunion with DiMaggio and despair over her severed ties with the Kennedy brothers. Sinatra remembered Monroe consuming cocktails and pills in alarming quantities as she vented to him about feeling abandoned by the Kennedys. At one point at the weekend, Monroe accidentally overdosed on barbiturates and Sinatra had to rush to her hotel room. He found her unconscious and quickly took measures to revive her, including dousing her face with cold water. After she regained consciousness, Sinatra demanded she accompany him on a brisk walk around the resort grounds to stay alert. Witnesses recall seeing a distraught Sinatra guiding an extremely drowsy Monroe around the Cal Neva cabins, propping her up to prevent another overdose. Sinatra later said he had never seen Monroe so emotionally unraveled as she was that weekend. Unknown to either Monroe or Sinatra, tabloid reporters were stalking the resort, trying to snap photos of the actress. The press had caught wind that Monroe was secretly back with DiMaggio and intended to announce their marriage plans at an upcoming press conference. Eager for gossip fodder, the paparazzi attempted to document evidence of the reconciliation. The media encroachment compounded Monroe's anxiety and substance intake during her stay. Meanwhile, DiMaggio remained nearby at a separate hotel, coordinating with Sinatra to keep Monroe safe and try to stabilize her. But her emotional state only deteriorated further. Sinatra's belief she was murdered. In the immediate aftermath of Monroe's death, whispers swirled that she had been in fact murdered to silence her. Sinatra gave credence to these chilling theories based on evidence he uncovered. 
Sinatra's lawyer, Mickey Rudin, informed the singer that Monroe had been killed to stop her from holding a tell-all press conference about the Kennedys. Sinatra also had underworld connections linking Monroe's death to the mafia. Chicago mob boss Sam Giancana said Monroe was snuffed out by an organized crime figure who ran in both Kennedy and Sinatra circles. Additionally, Los Angeles mobster Johnny Roselli told Sinatra that Monroe was purposefully silenced before she could damage the Kennedys' reputations. Piecing together what he knew of Monroe's final days, along with the revelations from Rudin and his mafia contacts, Sinatra became convinced that Robert Kennedy and Jimmy Hoffa conspired to have Monroe murdered via lethal injection. Sinatra thought they hired a corrupt medical examiner to administer a fatal barbiturate suppository while she was unconscious. With her major announcement about reuniting with DiMaggio on the horizon, the theory was that Kennedy and Hoffa felt the bombshell actress needed to be stopped from airing details of her affairs. They couldn't risk a national scandal rupturing Camelot's idyllic image ahead of JFK's re-election bid. Sinatra also suspected the mob held up their end of this quid pro quo bargain by guaranteeing union support for Kennedy in the 64 campaign. In Sinatra's mind, Monroe was a victim of a high-level political assassination. He shared his belief that she was snuffed out because Monroe's re-emergence threatened too many powerful interests. For decades after Monroe's passing, Sinatra continued investigating theories around her possible murder. He financed private investigations into potential co-conspirators and scoured Monroe's phone records and medical reports for clues. He felt compelled to achieve some justice for his dear friend Monroe and expose those responsible. While never able to definitively prove his allegations, Sinatra remained utterly convinced that the corrupt forces of Hollywood, Washington, and organized crime had colluded to end Monroe's life. He carried resentment towards the Kennedys, Jimmy Hoffa, and the mafia leaders he held accountable for Monroe's tragic end. Their Close Bond Though never romantically involved, Monroe and Sinatra shared an incredibly close platonic bond. They formed an intimate friendship based on their similar experiences as stars navigating fame. Both felt isolated and burdened by their public image and notoriety. They could relax together, though, and open up honestly with each other about their struggles. According to Sinatra's friend Peter Lawford, they had a rapport like Bogey and Bacall. Losing Monroe devastated Sinatra and left an irreplaceable void in his life. Besides grieving her loss, he deeply regretted being unable to rescue someone he cared for so dearly. He pledged to never forget the special connection they shared, a bond allowing two lost souls to find solace. Now it's time to hear from you. What do you think about Marilyn Monroe's death? Was it a legit death or was she murdered? Let us know in the comments section below.